Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm making this absolutely glorious little pagoda um, made by Rolfie and I'm also going to make a backflow incense burner um, to try and, I don't know, make it look mine as well. <laughs> um, so we're going to start with the pagoda. If you're not interested in watching the making of the pagoda um, then just skip forward to like 23 minutes and 25 seconds. I think that's where I finish it. Um, but otherwise sit back and enjoy it's a bit of a long video so uh, get some snacks out <laughs> um, where it comes to the pagoda I'm going to list on the screen all the parts that I've used in um, from the instructions um, I'm not going to tell you what parts are what because literally I will sound like some sort of grandmaster chess player <laughs> D1 goes to D2 <laughs> Um, so I figured that would be a bit weird, but uh, yeah, I'll uh, just list on the screen what parts I'm using so you can follow the step-by-step -step instructions that way instead. Um, some of it is time-lapse, but you know, please press the pause button if you're building yours as well. <laughs> So unlike some of my other 3D puzzle builds on this channel where I haven't painted until after I've built it and made life like horrendously bad for myself, <laughs> I decided this time to uh, paint the parts as I went along. Um, don't worry, I didn't include like all of the painting because literally there, this build took me three days because of adding in all the painting. So <laughs> I'm not going to keep you here for three days watching. <laughs> Um, but yeah, if you're going to paint your pagoda, I strongly suggest you do it by the parts rather than um, wait until the end like I did with uh, my uh, planetarium that I did. I'll leave a link to that in the top bar so that you can watch that video after you've watched this one, obviously. <laughs> um, but yeah, paint your parts before you uh, attach them. <laughs> So I did try to be a little creative around like the painting thing um, with my wonderful editing skills. <laughs> I'm very sorry. Um, some of the, the cuts are just, uh, yeah, they're 
they're me. <laughs> I take responsibility. And I was about as consistent as um, my toddler. So <laughs> I'm very sorry. Some of them look pretty good. Others are just magical editing skills that you can clearly tell. <laughs> like that one <laughs> how bad I am at editing so my apologies <laughs> oh while I remember these little bits here buy some wood glue because these tiny little uh, lego hands <laughs> were the bane of my life they kept falling out every time I tried to attach the roof so yeah just a little bit of wood glue to pin them in because otherwise they are going to drive you insane like they did for me um, but obviously I'm me and I take a long time to figure these things out. <laughs> um, but yeah, I literally just used a little bit of Gorilla wood glue just to hold them in pl place much further down the line. You know, after I've knocked the roof off at least 12 times, then I figured out how to do it. <laughs> so the handy top tip here, buy some wood glue and uh, pin those little bleeders in before they become an issue for you. <laughs> The instructions for this pagoda tell you to um, attach the roof onto these little claspy things around the edge um, and then sort of try and pin them together like I'm doing now. I found it much, much easier to build the roof outside and then clip them down. Um, 
I know it's not the way that the instructions do it, but it's kind of trying to save you a little bit of time now <laughs> because doing it that way is next to impossible. You can't get those little things to clip together when the roof is actually on the pagoda. <laughs> so yeah, if I were you, I would give it a go of building the roof on the outside of the pagoda and then attaching it. Just wanted to point out that these uh, little balcony pieces look like the uh, chest from Rayman Origins. You know, if you know, you know. <laughs>
These are the only parts that I ended up painting once it had been built rather than pre-painting and then building purely because I started to paint them and then um, my gold paint's a little bit thicker than my other acrylic paints so I ended up running into issues of not actually being able to put it together. Um, so yeah if you're using thick paints be very very careful about uh, closing the gaps between your little wooden pieces. <laughs> That's the pagoda all built. I'm hoping like 23 minutes wasn't too long because <laughs> that took me three days. <laughs> um, you're going to hear a bit more from me now because we're now we're heading into the sculpting process. This is epoxy sculpt. Um, it's a two part sort of epoxy putty kind of thing. Um, it dries as hard as a rock um, and is really, really durable. So for things like an incense burner, it's great because it's not going to crack. <laughs> I found that using my usual clay, my polymer clay, that uh, the heat from the incense just gets way too much and cracks it. So using something like a poxy putty, or, or a poxy sculpt should I say, or and milliput, both are really good for incense burners. All I'm doing is creating a little cylinder and um, this is the bottom of a coat can that I have poked a hole into. This is what is going to hold our incense at the top of the mountain. So literally you just got to make a cylinder, attach the bottom of the coat can. I know I'm an expensive kind of person. <laughs> and then poke a hole all the way through. Make sure that your fingers aren't in the way. <laughs> I've got a habit of stabbing myself. <laughs> Um, and then yeah just make wiggle it around make the hole quite wide because you want enough space for all that lovely incense smoke to dribble down dribble <laughs> that doesn't sound very appealing at all to run down the mountain um, with any spares I make like scales and teeth out of the clay so I'm not wasting anything Next it's on to the armature literally I've got like this ceramic dish you don't really need a ceramic dish you can make one using polymer clay if you want um, and a shed ton of aluminum foil aluminium foil I'm not sure wherever you're from foil we're using that <laughs> um, just build your mountain up as high as you want it um, yeah this is me creating the the cave bit at the top that I'm not going to show you because I'm an idiot and I didn't move the camera up so yeah I, I twist the wire and then I cut it down and then <laughs> make the cave so none of you can see it and this is me realizing <laughs> that you can't see what I'm doing <laughs> so that's it <laughs> um, that bit will be where I house the incense burner um, to make sure that my smoke can get through quite nicely you don't need to do this but I choose to um, I poke a hole through the armature at the top there and then I popped a tiny little bit of copper pipe in um, that's got some Gorilla Gel glue on it um, just to hold it in place but uh, it's completely unnecessary you can just poke a hole or create a valley somewhere within your clay. Um, my mountain at the minute looks terrible it is literally covered in all the scrap clay I have <laughs> so it's all weird and wonderful colours but it doesn't matter because we're going to be painting it later. <laughs> Now I'm going to make some stalactites and stalagmites for my little cave. Um, basically all you need to do is make a ton of different size unicorn horns <laughs> and then attach them to your cave um, at the top. You don't need to do this obviously, it depends on if you've made a cave or not. Um, but yeah, it's literally just make loads of unicorn horns. <laughs> Oh, 
Once I've finished adding all of my stalactites and stalagmites to my little cave, I really like saying that, stalactites, stalagmites. <laughs> it was time to put this mountain into the oven. Um, then whilst that was baking, I went on to make my rocks. These are my homemade rocks. It saves an absolute fortune than going to like the hobby store and buying the pre-made molds and all that sort of stuff because they really are expensive. <laughs> Um, all I do is I screw up a ball of foil and then I unscrew up, is that thing? Unscrew up a ball of foil <laughs> and then kind of turn it into a bowl. I, I made two for this project because I needed a lot of rocks. <laughs> um, then I get some, what's it called? What is it called? It's gypsum. I've forgotten what we call it here in the UK. Oh my God, brain dead. Plaster of Paris. <laughs> There we go, got there. <laughs> Just add a little bit of water and uh, keep mixing. Um, also, top tip, don't use like the bottom of a Pepsi bottle because it all congeals in the uh, little dimples at the bottom of the thing. Use a normal cup or something like that. <laughs> Once it's all dry, you'll find that all the foil has stuck into the creases. It's the only annoying part of doing it this way. Just smash it up with a little hammer. And then you can sort of pick the foil out as you go. It's quite a satisfying process, to be quite honest. You'll enjoy it more than you think. <laughs> and you will make a massive mess. So, so long as you're happy with loads of mess, um, because uh, buying expensive stuff will save half of that problem. <laughs> um, yeah, then I attached all of my rocks to my incense burner. Um, I did try loads of different methods. As you can see, I've got some two-part resin glue stuff over there. That didn't work. Apparently, plaster of Paris really is uh, very absorbent. <laughs> so the only thing that I found that did really work was more plaster of Paris. <laughs> um, so I used it kind of like a, as a grout, um, put it onto the baked sculpture, add a rock, and then grouted around it. But you've got to be really quick because this stuff dries so fast. <laughs> Um, but once it's all in, it does look really, really cool and very, very rocky. It, this is one of those trust the processes moments. You look at it and you think, oh, I've made this god awful looking thing. It just, yeah, looks quite scary with teeth and God knows what else. But I, I, I think I managed to make it look nice at the end. <laughs> Once I finished building my mountain, I went on to do one final test. Um, I do loads of testing throughout my projects, especially when I'm making incense burners, because at any point things change and you might have squashed something and it doesn't work anymore. So yes, you will go through a lot of incense, but it really is worth doing the test to make sure that everything is working fine all the way through your build. Um, after that, it was moving on to make my little spirit fox. Um, We'll start with just a tiny bit of armature, literally just some floral wire wrapped around a slightly larger piece <laughs> of wire. He's got to be quite small because he's got to fit on my mountain. Um, but this kitsune um, is also known as a yokai. Yokai are kind of like Japan's little spirits. They've got a spirit for pretty much everything, literally everything. I had a little Google on yokai, which is what a kitsune is. Um, they have some weird and wonderful spirits going on. There's literally, there's a, a spirit for a hundred year old umbrella out there. I think that's amazing. <laughs> They've got some really, really cool spirits. But this particular spirit is a fox um, that can shapeshift into a human. Um, it's also a messenger to the goddess, um, which is why it's often depicted um, with like a message in its mouth. Um, you can find these foxes all around Japan, especially around their shrines. Um, they are—they kind of represent, I don't know, they're, they're good and bad. They're nothing, 
absolutely horrendous. They became um, more mischievous, more fox-like um, in their later storytellings, but in their earliers, it, they were a messenger between the goddess and mankind. When it comes to making his eyes, I literally just used some of my orange Fimo clay. Um, it's a slightly harder clay than my Super Sculpey. It just holds the shape better. I wasn't trying to make a demon dog. <laughs> I know that's what I kind of made, but uh, thankfully I'm painting him later, so it won't matter. <laughs>
I needed to make a little platform for my fox to sit on because um, obviously with this massive rocky texture you kind of need to just I don't know figure out what you're putting stuff later on <laughs> and so I just used a little bit of bacon bond on the uh, mountainside and tried to make a rocky outcrop <laughs> um, then to put my fox down I literally just stabbed half a cocktail stick in and a little bit more bacon bond um, and then attach his tails I made six of them but Kitsune have loads of tails they can have one tail all the way up to however many tails you want to put on um, I did six because I just like the number six <laughs> um, so yeah I just cut six equal chunks of clay rolled them out into well the first three tails I didn't put armature in because they're just sort of hanging down but the tails that I want to be looking like they're in movement I just used a bit of floral wire that I wrapped around itself and then sort of stuck that inside of my tails the same way I would with arms and legs same sort of process um, and then yeah just jabbed them into his butt <laughs> I made these trees using floral wire. I literally grabbed loads and loads of strands of floral wire and wrapped them around each other and then sort of pulled off branch by branch. Um, I didn't show you how I made them because I just kept stabbing myself <laughs> doing it. Um, so yeah, be careful if you're going to make your own trees. You can buy the, like um, pre-made trees, which will look great. I'm just cheap and like to make everything. <laughs> Um, I wrapped the bottom half of the trees in some of my polymer clay um, and I left the wire exposed um, to attach my cherry blossom later on. Once I finished adding in all of these lovely little tree roots, um, it was in for a final bake. Um, this thing just about fit in my oven, so be very careful on height. <laughs> um, after that, it was on to painting. Um, I'm using my usual Arteza paints. God, the mess that I have made making this project. My desk was horrendously messy, and I'm very sorry that my space is horrendously messy. <laughs> um, for the rock textures, I literally just started off with like priming it all black, and then went progressively lighter on dry brushing different shades of grey. <laughs> um, eventually I ended up with this quite nice rocky texture. Um, then I added in a little bit of colour, not too much, just some green patches um, and then went on to start painting the cherry blossom trees. Um, I kept these quite simple with like a basic Mars brown um, and then I added in some darker browns later on once this had fully dried. So my Kitsune I primed in white instead of black. I wanted to go with a more traditional colour scheme. Um, quite often Kitsune are depicted with white fur and red markings, sometimes with gold as well. So um, I stuck with those three colours for my Kitsune. Um, but in pop culture, it's so many different colours now. <laughs> so many different colours. Um, yeah, the Kitsune has developed a lot over the years she has developed or she or he um has developed from you know just a humble fox right up to some wonderful anime programs and manga books and you know she she's literally everywhere in pop culture the reason that i came up with this idea is because i was watching love death and robots 
<laughs> over on Netflix and uh, they have a Kitsune storyline on there as well so you should definitely go check that out if you have Netflix um, it, love Death and Robots, it's totally worth watching there are so many things I want to make from watching that programme um, but yeah the general aesthetics of a Kitsune is white and red with maybe some gold <laughs> So this was the fun bit of my build. Um, I literally blended down a kitchen sponge, <laughs> a pink kitchen sponge. All I did was um, I popped the sponge into a blender with a little bit of water. I found that doing it without water, um, the sponge just kind of flew away from the uh, blades. <laughs> so I need a little bit of water in there. Um, yeah, then I blended down the... Uh, a sponge to make this floof um, added a load of Mod Podge to it and then spent ages uh, trying to attach it to some very flimsy wire <laughs> upside though um, was peeling that glue off my fingers afterwards was so much fun <laughs> it was great um, I learnt this technique from Studson Studios so um, from his Encanto build so uh, you know, if you've got spare time um, after you finish watching this video, go and check out his stuff. He's, he's like got some really cool creations going on. Um, not so much with polymer clay, he's more of a scratch builder, but yeah, definitely take the time to pop over to his channel and have a look. Um, after that, I added in a load of little florally bits and it was done. This build has taken me an absolute age and I'm sorry for taking so long to put anything out, but uh, yeah, it was a real fun creation to make and it did take a very long time to make. <laughs> so um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please do send me a like. Um, write in the comments section anything that, you know, can help my channel progress, then please do because, you know, I love making this content, but uh, I need to know that you kind of like it too. <laughs> If you're new here, then please do take a minute to subscribe. You know, if you've got this far, then clearly you enjoyed watching the content. <laughs> so you owe me that subscribe. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys, for watching. And I guess I will catch you in the next one. Bye.